स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so let let me now go to another another new method so this new method so suppose we have we have also seen functionals which has more than one independent variable so in that case the ritz method changes to a much more general method known as the kantorowicz method okay so if we have more than so let me call this as method 3 so if we have more than one independent more than one independent variable we are going to use the so called kantorowicz method right more than one independent variable so we have the so called kantorowicz method so what exactly is kantorowicz method so it is an extension of the ritz method so for example we have a function of two variables so we approximate our function of two variables as follows we approximate it as zn of x comma y where now my basis functions are both functions of x and y but notice how i write down my constants or the unknowns summation i from 1 to n ci of phi i of x comma y except that the major the only difference now in this approximation is that these constants are ci's are no longer constants but functions of the variable one of the variables x okay so again we choose phi of x not y such that is satisfies the boundary condition the same principle as we did with ritz method or let me say that phi 0 of xy is equal to z0 of xy for all x comma y on the boundary of the domain right and also i choose my phi i's of x comma y such that phi i satisfies homogeneous condition homogeneous condition that is that is phi i of x comma y is equal to 0 for all x and y on the boundary well as well right so it vanishes on the boundary okay so so now since we have chosen c to be functions of one variable it provides us to choose a larger class of functions so this method the the generalization of the ritz method has provided us with more flexibility here okay so so as i said the major difference is ci's are now function of one variable they are now functions of one variable and it allows it allows a larger a larger class of functions to be used now so so far we have seen the approximation this question is how are we you going to use this approximation okay so notice notice that my uh, my original integral is the double integral so i am going to first i am going to first integrate one of the integrals so i am going to integrate i am going to integrate let's say the inner integral or the y integral okay so what i had is let me say that our well let me say my approximate integral my approximate integral is f of zn this is also equal to the double integral over the domain omega of zn of x comma y uh, dy dx right so we can easily approximate the the y integral we will see that and approx and replace zn with its approximation we see that that this is going to give us the following 
uh, well let me rewrite this stage uh, slightly below. So, this is also equal to this is also equal to the double integral over omega times the summation uh, well phi 0 of x y right plus uh, well uh, certainly well phi 0 of x x comma y times summation c i of x times phi i of x comma y right. Uh, this is also equal to d y t x. So, this we can change into we can take out well first of all we have the integral over x and then we have the inner integral over y of phi naught d y this we can perform and then notice this this uh, second term we can take the summation out and then we have the x integral c i of x d x and the uh, the inner integral is from y 0 to y 1 of phi i of x y with respect to d y we integrate right. So, we can certainly perform the y integral on both the sets. So, we what we do is we integrate we integrate the inner integral the inner integral integral let us let us for the time being assume let us for the time being assume that uh, uh, that phi is 0 anyway it vanishes on the boundary. So, let us assume that phi the first uh, family of the basis function is 0. So, notice that now my my approximate integral becomes f of z n is equal to the summation i from 0 to n uh, integral of c i of x and now the inner integral we can very nicely integrate with respect to y to get a function capital phi i of x dx right. Let me call this this expression by a. So, a <coughs> so a is an integrand. So, notice that the integrand in a is purely a function of x right. So, the integrand the integrand is purely purely a function of x right. So, now we have changed a functional of two variables to a functional of one variable x. So, from here we can start applying the standard Euler Lagrange machinery, the standard Euler Lagrange machinery right to get the exact well exact or solution with respect to the variable x or approximate solution with respect to the variables x y. Okay. So, let me just highlight through an example as to what I just said right. So, this is my third example. So, again uh, so the question says extremize extremize f of z of x y which is also equal to integral from minus b to b integral from minus a to a of z x square plus z y square minus 2 z 2 z d x d y right. So, right now right now let me just interchange my x and y. So, my inner integral is with respect to x and the outer is with respect to y right. Okay. So, we have to extremize this. We know that the Euler Lagrange solution to integrands having two independent variables x and y is as follows. So, note that my Euler Lagrange equation my Euler Lagrange equation reduces reduces to the solution of of the following equation partial x partial f partial z x plus partial y partial f partial z y 
is equal to partial f partial z right ok. So, z we further assume that z is 0 on the boundary it is 0 on the boundary of this functional ok. So, when we plug in the value of f which is this quantity we see that this is also equal to del square z of x comma y this is equal to minus 1. So, my Euler Lagrange equation reduces to the Poisson equation. So, this is also the Poisson equation and all we need to do to find the extremal is to solve this Poisson equation here. Okay. So, now we are now going to solve via the Cantorovic's method. Okay. Well, students can can definitely solve this Poisson equation subject to the zero boundary condition. We are now going to highlight the solution via the Cantorovic's method. Okay. So, let me just approximate approximate z by z 1 z 1 which is also equal to c 1 of x times b square minus y square right. We note that we note that z 1 of x comma plus minus b is also equal to the way we have chosen z 1 it vanishes on the boundary plus minus b right. So, now we are our approximation is such that we are now left with two more boundary condition that is at x equal to a and minus a which we will utilize later on. So, we have already utilized two boundary conditions right. So, then then we have to evaluate these things. So, z 1 of x the x derivative of z and we have to find the square of this quantity we differentiate with respect to x we get c 1 prime times b square minus y square and we take the square. Similarly, well I can still go ahead and open this. So, this one becomes c 1 prime square times b square plus well b 4 times y 4 minus 2 b square y square right and z 1 of y whole square is is c 1 of x times we we differentiate this we get uh, 2 y negative 2 y we square this up we get c 1 square times 4 times y square right. So, I see that my f z can now be approximated with z 1 right and my f z is originally this integral so let me just write down this integral right so this is now approximated so this is my fz so this is now approximated using using my z1 and we see the following integral so i get integral from minus a to a dx of I have now pulled in the y integral inside because that can be integrated immediately and the inner integral is from minus b to b c prime of x square b square minus y square whole square plus 4 c square y square minus 2 c b square minus y square. Uh, and this is also equal to uh, well this whole quantity is integrated with respect to y right ok. So, when we do that when we do that let me write down the final uh, integral the outer integral of course, cannot be evaluated, but the inner integral after its evaluation gives the following result we get a polynomial in terms of x. So, 16 by 15 b 5 c prime of x square plus 8 by 3 b cube c square x minus 8 by 3 
b cube c of x right and this is the integral with respect to the variable x. So, now we have reduced our two variable in functional into a one variable functional the variable being x. So, now the standard Euler Lagrange machinery is going to apply notice that notice that my f of z 1 is now an integral integral from minus a to a of the small function f of x comma c comma c prime well, c, well yeah. So, c is my dependent variable instead of y we have c as a dependent variable right. So, with then we use the Euler Lagrange machinery my my f of x comma c comma c prime is this following quantity. So, let me just quickly write it down this is b to the power 5 c prime of x whole square plus 8 by 3 b cube c of x whole square minus 8 by 3 b cube c of x and we see that when we take when we take the derivative of f with respect to c 16 by 3 b cube c x minus 8 by 3 b cube I get that del f del I am just evaluating the various partial derivatives which are to be used in my Euler Lagrange equation right. So, del f partial f partial c prime gives me the following quantity 32 by 15 b to the power 5 c prime of x c double prime of x right. Let me further differentiate with respect to x. So, that is what we get ok. So, then uh, well let me keep these two terms separate because I need both the terms. So, this is c c prime and also the the total derivative of partial f partial c prime is 32 by 15 b to the power 5 c double prime of x. So, we use this all these in my Euler Lagrange equation d d x of partial f partial c prime minus partial f partial c and we see that we get the set it equal to 0 and this gives the following equation c double prime of x minus 5 by 2 b square c of x is equal to minus 5 by 4 b square. Now, students can notice that this is a constant coefficient non homogeneous ODE and let me write down the solution let me call this as as my star. So, the solution to the star is as follows I see that the solution I directly write the solution I get that this is C 1 cos hyperbolic of square root 5 by 2 students are asked to check that this is indeed the solution or find the solution themselves which is not difficult to find for the ODE. So, this is square root 5 by 2 x by b plus half ok. Now, we also know that we also know that c of x uh, well we, we also know that z is 0 on the boundary right. So, z z must be z is definitely the, the solution is definitely even with respect to y. So, z is an even function even function with respect to both x and y due to the presence of the boundary condition that we have and also the type of the functional that we have right that is easy to check right. And so, which means that uh, we can completely using this condition we can completely eliminate k 2 right. Even if we do not know the symmetry even if we do not know that z is an even function we can use both the boundary conditions not a problem right now I am just simplifying. So, now we only have one parameter to solve for that is k 1 and we also know that we also know that this is given that z of uh, plus minus a comma y the solution vanishes on the boundary. So, I can very well use the fact that c of a is 0 
don't need to use the other boundary condition because we have already used the fact that z is an even function. Okay. Once we do that, we see that the solution, the solution comes out to be, which is approximated as z1 of x comma y. Let me write down the solution. This is half b square minus y square. So, that is the y dependence times 1 minus cos hyperbolic of square root 5 by 2 times x by b divided by cos hyperbolic of square root 5 by 2 times a by b. Right? Notice that this vanishes on the boundary x equal to a. Now, I end my discussion here by mentioning that we could possibly use more and more approximation for a better, better resolution. So, for more, for more, uh, you know, or better, I, the, the word is for better, for better approximation, we could possibly try, we could possibly try this form of the approximate function b square minus y square times c 1 of x plus b square minus y square whole square times c 2 of x. Right? So, this is for a better approximation. Okay. So, I end my discussion by giving a reference in which uh, more and more numerical methods and better numerical methods are prescribed. The students are asked to refer to this book. So, so far that we have shown in this lecture is all preliminary and students are asked to refer to this following book, Calculus of Variations by, by L. E. Elskog, Els, Elsgolk. Okay? And then there is another paper in Proceedings of Royal Society, Royal Society A, uh, volume 303, page 497 to 502, and this is a very classic paper in 1968. This mentions some of the numerical methods to the Euler Lagrange equation. So, thank you for listening, and in the next lecture, I am going to talk about isoperimetric problem or constraint optimization. So, thank you very much.